Well, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we are back with some more of that speed monthly tourney. We're on Shechedron today with that whole 30 minute time limit rank. Who do we have? What are they bringing? Left hand side in the blue, we have Rogis, playing as Panthers and Tartra, Rogue on Maverick Income. Right hand side in red, we have Homoyu 98, playing a 6 Airborne Division with a Vanguard Income. And right off the bat, we are seeing some cheeky Napalm play, but actually not Napalm in the road. I mean, he is eventually, but I feel like he missed an opportunity. I would have thought you would have gone immediately for that crossroads. If you can get that super early mozzie out, then life's going to be pretty good. Yeah, two mozzies, including the recon run to make sure the bomb drop is accurate. Also seeing the recon plane from Rogus up north, so both sides have similar ideas. That's a lot of investment in airplanes early on for Homoyun. Yeah, what's it going to be? About, what, like, 150 points? 140 points right there? Oh, yeah. Like, 100 and... Yeah, it's, it's a lot of bloody points. And that's ground units, which you could have. So Homoyun's going to be a little bit light on the ground. Rogue is getting some great MG42 position jump. But we're seeing Homoyun just go right up in the middle of some flamethrower troops to try and secure some Crick territory. Well, the weird thing just happened here is you see the flamethrower for that's the southeast of those MG42s. Uh, he had a gunfight or a flame war, depending on how you look at it, with a sniper's sten, which is not really what you expect to see. No, not at all. For us in Rogus, get onto the hill down south, and that's going to be, yeah, pretty secured, because there's not really much British troops up here. And then up north, it is steady, neither side really pushing too hard. Yeah, what do you, how do you feel about this whole P3 call -ins to the north? Yeah, that I... is interesting. They're not the best, like, TQC5 support tanks, as the 50mm is a little bit lacking, but you do got two machine guns, and also you are fighting against six airborne, which doesn't rather have a decent amount of infantry anti-tank, but the actual tanks aren't now scary. Rather, well, can be a little bit scary, but not that scary. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a sliding scale of scary right now, if that's yeah. what you kind of mean. Um, but yeah, that's a great way to kind of talk about it. Ooh, Centaur down to the south, actually, taking out one of the MG42s. will be able to take out the other one, and, and that's a surprisingly efficient tank right now. Usually we can just kind of laugh at the Centaur, but no, this makes perfect sense in this case. Yeah, just a long-range fire support to get rid of all the MG42s is definitely benefiting Homoyun quite a bit. Rogus is really going to have to make up one P3 work quite well. Really, you probably sort of got those P3s and used them down south in their initial attack. Because if you can knock out six airborne, there's very limited, you know, armored units, you can really just kind of roll over them in an open field. And that's kind of the thing I was thinking about myself, is if you're looking at really what these guys are doing it, it just it seemed like a very not passive play but just seemed like a misplay more than anything yeah well, to be fair Tatra or Rogue is, is playing with the Maverick so he's at an income disadvantage right now it's also a point disadvantage at 915 here it really does a great push in the center so far from Holman Yoon which hasn't really been challenged yet by Rogue is. he's just very focused in trying to well, just plug the far south yeah, there's that, but I think it's also one of those things, too, that um, with that initial kind of deployment, put the line of shoots up to the north. I mean, right now you're going to see them getting hammered in 32 seconds as that 203 off map really kind of starts to uh, say hello. But put the tanks where the tanks will do the most good. I mean, and we've harped on for many, many hours about the evils of putting tanks in towns. It just, I mean... It, it sounds great, tanks and towns. It's a lovely little consonance there, but not really great tactically. Yeah, it just doesn't really got much use for those kinds of freeze hells, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, Homoyun will be able to get a very good artillery strike, and he does have the forces in preparation to counterattack, keeping one AB powers inside of their truck, probably to rush on through and pick up their remains. Well, oddly enough, there was actually a, a push that was starting to happen over here from roguish unfortunately that recon p3 goes down and that is not a cheap thing to lose like that is way more expensive than just the kind of the 50 points that it is yeah there's a decent amount of cheap firepower but we do have a lot of tetrarchs in this town as well the off map artillery strike doing decent there's still a good amount of german forces in the southern end of the town which haven't been affected 
but Homeyun will be able to make a pretty good push. Well, and I guess the thing I was thinking of more is, yeah, it's true that it didn't kill a whole lot, but it still killed a tank. Mm -hmm. Which is, that's a, that's a big kill. That's a very big kill. Tetrarch also playing literally tanks at 20 paces with the P3 <laughs> and finally loses, but the AB pairs come in with a Piot and it's like a broken clock. They work twice a year. Yep. In Very with... clutch. Absolutely. Absolutely. But with that, as I turn our attention down to the southern side, we have the Lendeschutzen coming up against those AB Paras uh, on the hilltop here. And not unexpected. I mean, this is kind of the same kind of issues you're going to see pretty consistently as Lendeschutzen just don't have the guts to kind of stick it out. Yeah, they have really crap CQC final power. Even just a two-man flamethrower team is going to cause all sorts of havoc. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but I think that's why he's bringing the 231s over here in the meantime. Yes, it's possible they could get freaked out, but it's very, very unlikely that they're going to go be getting completely owned by this particular potential. Yeah, all I have to do is really clear off that one AB flamethrower, and he's pretty much got that hill back under control and can probably capture that one flag right in the center of the lungs. I mean, Rogus isn't doing terrible now. He's managed to stabilize a bit down south. He's still got the far southern hill under his control. And definitely long game, he does have the tank and long range anti tank firepower. Which on Sachedron means quite a lot. It has quite a decent amount of long range battles. That's true, but we just kind of maybe missed it down to the southern side. We did see one of those pack 36s going down. And while they're just about 30 points, they still represent a rather significant anti tank presence. Yeah. Um, What's more, also, that Recon Focke Wolf, well, he just got fucked. And uh, the Tempest over here in the meantime, quite pleased with doing that, so. Not yeah, a strong. Yeah, the yeah. Exactly. Exactly, and that seems to be a consistent issue. Next Barrage comes in. This one's not going to do a whole lot. I mean, it's just kind of chilling over here in the back lines, but. It's still area denial. Yeah, and it does mean another flag does fall to Homayun. And he pretty much has the town almost completely under control. So it's the land shooting holding on to the last little bit of land left in that town. The Panther free reinforcements, but once again, not going to be the best fire support here. Honestly, no. the two free runs in the town would probably be a better bet. And, and you know what? And that's what I was time. thinking. And that's exactly what I was thinking as well, is that the 231s, you put a couple down to the south, you have one to the north. But these guys, you, you don't want them in an open field fight. These are the knife fighters. You want to put your auto cannons any single time there's a town, because then you can very quickly have no town. Yeah, and especially when you just only fight in Tetriarch, so auto cannon's going to be more than enough to deal with that, you know, pesky glider armor. And here comes more AB powers with the Piat. Trying to get in closer, and it's just, yeah, very dangerous territory for his Panther Freeze to be in. Well, and Tetrarch Little John in the meantime. And the Oxen Bucks, too. So, Oxen Bucks, guys, just as a bit of a reminder, uh, basically para pioneers, uh, and with, with the actual the Kabota Lerungs that you would see over here from the German side of things, anyway. Um, first Piat comes up. Ooh. Does miss, but the Tetrarch Little John also misses. So, I guess we can't say too, too much here. He's going to micro back once again as he's managed to reload, bring out the Piat, and, and Piat does its thing. It certainly does. It certainly does. And again, the P3L is way more valuable, in my mind, than a single Para squad, a single Tetrarch, heck, even two or three Tetrarchs, I feel like. Take out the P3s, that's the way to victory here. Yeah. Yeah. And you've seen down south, uh, Homoyun has been able to bring up quite a decent amount of armor. It's not heavy armor by any stretch, it's mainly just Tetriarchs and Centaurs. But there's a, there's a decent anti-tank presence here from Rogus. But once again, the Panther Free Hours down south along the like peninsula would pretty much push right on through. I mean, it's a, maybe like a six-pounder or two could stop him, but a good artillery support, like with 80 run mills, can make short work of that. The thing that I think I'm kind of intrigued by is the potential of having the 25 pounders being brought in in just about 10 seconds. Uh, Mozzie coming in, Mozzie's going to go down, but I think he's bringing the Mozzie, the other flame Mozzie 
Nope, he's not going to get him off in time. The flak veiling is going to encourage him that maybe he should be flittering around someplace else. Yeah. And you know, I feel like some sometimes in the summer here in Canada, I want a flak villain to get rid of the actual mosquitoes. I am suddenly very, very nervous and shocked about the size of the bugs you must have up there that you need a flak veiling for it. <laughs> Um, it, gets, it gets very dangerous. So it seems. So it seems. Weird push happening to the northern side. Uh, Peacock's MG26 is pushing back against some of those Ox and Bucks, AP Paras. And, and frankly, the Tetrarch Little John just kind of really isn't an anti anything. So. Yeah. Pretty much this is an overwhelming amount of firepower on a pretty rig point of Homer Yoon's line here. It's a very good push from Rogus. And just, you know, enough machine gun firepower is enough to get your ray through all the dastardly airborne troops. So I see Panzer Grenadiers of the MG26s. I mean, they're not as... Oh, there they have the bloody, uh, Gabanta Lung Dooms. I forgot the Pioneer ones, at least. Yep. They're not as good as... The, the, what I'm trying to say, the, they're not as good as they were pre-patch, where they were, like, 20 points. But still not bad for 25 points. Let me just say, unfortunately, this is a bit of a real world joke, but you just lost one of your relatives at the a uh, the two or three off map. I think it was creeped oh. by your uncle. <laughs> uh, and the Tetrarch Little John does go down, courtesy of the Pikmin the alien with again the AT grenades here, and the Centaur apparently not having a whole lot of respect for holy ground. He's trying to make yourself a little bit holier by blasting a couple of them in it. Yeah, that's a very good position for the Centaur to fight some. Much needed long range fire support, mostly coming in to drop some hot stuff. And very impressive from Rogus from being able to actually do a very effective counter attack in just town. He's just throwing in enough bodies while Homer Yoon is running pretty short. Well, he's throwing his bodies down to the southern side, that's why. Oh, yes. So oh, yes, indeed. Some AB leaders in there. The S, that's kind of scary, but at the same time, there's AB Paras moving up, a bunch of Tetrarchs, and. He's slightly mistimed the tempo of the attack, so you can see one of these guys is going to get hurt very, very badly. Um, but at the same point, I mean, he's going to have enough Tetrarchs, he can just kind of bum rush and will bum rush this P3, and there's very little in the way of anti tank here. Yeah. It's like the Panzer Freeze running for his life. <laughs> A little and... cavalry attack. He yep, he takes out the, the scariest piece, don't get me wrong. Um and now it's just gonna be the pack thirty seven. The pack thirty seven is the only guy who might be able to stop this particular push. But he's killing enough for it. His question is is he accurate enough for it? And right now the answer to that is no. No. Oh a very good bombing row oh, misses the anti tank gun. So it's still a chance here for Rogus to pull us off. And to remember, the Tetrarch only has a single machine gun and no HE, so they do have a hard time against AT guns. But three more squads of infantry moving on in. It's a good call. AP Paris over here with the Piot and the AP Leader, which can tickle the pack. Can't do a lot of damage, but can tickle the pack for the time being. Yeah. Just also, small volleys of the Ironfield. Also, I do want to call out the fact that apparently your check has arrived. It's uh, moving on the northern road. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ooh, actually... Guys, I don't, I don't know who's paying the bill, but there's checks everywhere here. So, mm -hmm. 38 T's moving on in. Oh, yep, there goes the 47 mil. And here comes another flag back over here, I would say, into Hamayun's control. I'm just thinking about it now. The 38 T is pretty much the perfect counter to the Tetrarch. It I is. Mean, Neva tank is great, but you have much more armor on the 38 T and roughly the same killy power. Even so, more killy power because it has HE yeah. as opposed to the Tetrarch, who just oh, only yeah. has AP, so... There you go. Now, apparently, though, the Czech tanks, um, well, still getting killed pretty quickly here. Uh, yep. We do see 81 mils over here for the Brits, a 6-pounder and a 17-pounder to the southern side. So, yeah, the, the axis of attack here is going to rotate quite a bit here to the south. Yeah. Like with a lot of us, example, on replays, rewatch. It usually comes down to effective fire support to keep you in the game because you need to be able to knock out, you know, all the killy anti-infantry stuff like enemy artillery, anti-aircraft guns, support guns, etc. So, you know, good use of his 81 mils. Does he have pack characters? No, he does not. He has 25 pounders. So he's really going to make those guys work. 
Yes, he will. Uh, actually, we have a 231 behind the front lines trying to be super cheeky here. He probably is going to pick up the kill in the centaur. Uh, which wouldn't matter since the centaur doesn't really exist anyway, being a mythological creature. Yeah. It's really just a bunch of Mycenaean Greeks and horses which freaked out some people. That's true. Absolutely true. I mean, I've, I've certainly seen The Rock play Hercules. I know I know my, my mythology here. <laughs> uh, Crumble, oh, Crumble, yeah. Crumble and P-38s actually getting in a bit of a weird duel here to the northern side. Huh. Very strange. Mostly because the Crumbles, I always kind of feel like, are, are rather underpowered, but, you know. Yeah. It's not honestly a bad tank to Chrome Rail. No. Like it's it's fast. It's the main main advantage for it really, and it's rather cheap at fifty points. You just uh, don't get enough of them. Now these Grenadier Voltigeurs uh, coming up from north, uh, sorry, southeast and northwest. Unfortunately, these guys are going to run into the entire German army in this sector. Which doesn't seem like much, but still, when you have four tanks, uh, a pack gun that can kind of like sling and shake its fist at you, and a couple of peak run squads, I don't see these guys surviving for very long. No, they are going to be kind of buggered, yeah. We also saw a first uh, Rough Realman strike on the Southern Hill trying to, no, actually successfully route him back. The British infantry and Rogus is going to be launching a counterattack. But we're 16 minutes into the match. Rogus is down quite a bit. You know, and this is his phase to really come back. He has a huge point advantage. And then comes C phase, of course. It's pretty even. Like 10 True. points is not that big of a deal. True. Now, northern side, we are going to see there's an engagement between basically pioneers and AB engineers. And actually, the Canadians getting their hands dirty as well. As AB Perez, they're coming in around this P3. This is going to get really ugly, and the P3 goes down. Yikes. So that is a big loss. And yes, I don't care if there's, there's an 88 in that town. There's so much infantry that this is going to be a 6th Airborne town for the time being. Yeah, very good counterattack from Homayun to regain that town. And that's two very important flags, which he is going to be able to keep control of. There's a whole heap of more like Stugs and Panzer 38 is being brought in, but he needs lots of infantry to clear that town, and his infantry aren't really up to snuff compared to the powers. No, they aren't, but the, the checks are boiling out of that forest on the lungs, and while, actually, ooh, the Mozzie's getting, oh no, I thought, thought the Mozzie might get his strike off, but no, that is not to be the case. Crumble yeah, in the really, meantime. Mm -hmm. Rogus's best, like, area of attack is just try to push through the south and center area he might as well just cut his losses in the town it's way too costly to try to capture the two central flags just try to hold on to the flag where the pioneers and the flag 88 is and then just devote everything down south especially if it's plane limited see he's he, gonna need a pretty big points lead to get a victory at this point true absolutely true i confess i'm, I'm fascinated by this cromwell p38 uh shooting gallery as two are down already, and even if they take out this Cromwell, he's traded rather efficiently. And he's basically shut down this push nearly by himself. Yeah. I'm taking those shots like a champ. No, never mind. <laughs> I sort of just shut up. I, like, I probably could have saved that Cromwell's life. The champ is down. The champ is down, ladies and gentlemen. He's taken a shot to the face, and he is not getting back up from that one. Uh, but while he has died, he has given a lot of infantry to, to the southern side a chance to kind of get in and get, you know, to the knife fighty distance. Yeah. Now, all those engineers coming in rather close quarters. Not enough fight support here from Rogus to roll us off, so... Yeah, Hill is going to flip on back over the homie unit. He's just been doing a very good job of keeping up that momentum. I mean, he loses up north, he pushes down south, he loses south, he pushes north. Exactly what you need to be doing, you know? Neither side really has been getting into that much of a, like, tunnel vision. They've been very dynamic. Well, that, that's part of it, but I was also going to say here, too, that his infantry-based AT has been surprisingly workable. Like, we, we make fun of the Piazza, as, as well you all know, but... He's had marauding piots the entire time, and and frankly, in my mind, he's done exactly what you should be doing, which is, especially with paratroopers, you've got to be flexible. You cannot have a stand-up fight very often or easily. 
Yeah. And also there's good use of uh, limited air power here, the few mozzies and other bombers coming and have been quite useful. And uh, I, had, I had another point I wanted to say, but I completely forgot now. I'm quite annoyed. Well, while you're annoyed at the must have to note up to the northern town, there has been a rather hefty shove coming in here. And you can see five, six new squads of infantry on top of what's already there. So you're right. He's, he's being aggressive with it. You know, he's saying, screw you, man. I'm taking my losses and I'm going to, you know, I'm sticking it out. Which you have to go and be just a little bit impressed by. Uh, we missed yeah. a second for a strike, by the way. I think we target the southern hill one more time. Maybe not. I'm not sure. We're seeing more infantry and just stuff being brought into that southern hill around C phase now, so the incomes have slowed down quite a bit, but definitely in the Homer Union's favor, because he just needs to really defend for a little bit to take the victory. So we've seen Rogus just deploy a massive, even some SS Sturm Grenadiers up north to try and like just clear through that town. Yeah, and, and it's a fascinating decision. And that's probably the only way I can really kind of put it. Um, Dame of Little John's being called out in braces to kind of go and really solidify control of the southern side, as well as the central. Uh, I think that for me, I probably would have been a little bit more aggressive of putting them to the north. But maybe he knows there's a giant, giant stream of reinforcements, and he kind of says, screw it. I don't know. Yeah. And infantry is coming in, but they're getting picked off in that transport. It's not good micro here at all from Rokas. I just counted. He's lost three infantry scrotch before they can jump out of their awful blitches. Yep. And not cheap ones either. Four. No, four. Jeez. No, press, press the unload button, please, for the love of God. Just hammer your face on the keyboard. Statistically, you should be able to hit the U button. Yes. And the P-Guns are out. If they're, you know wussy little weird MGs. They're Czech MGs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that I like this anymore. There was a potential that could have been a, like ruptured the line, really kind of been scary. But two more squads of Paris, four more squads of Paris being sent into the central position. They're getting picked up and cleaned off. And a lot of these bulges, yes, they are scary, but you can just tell just because the Germans are happy to see them. <laughs> yeah, losing half of your infantry reinforcement column before they can even get out the transports is, is not ideal circumstances, I would have to say. No, certainly not. I mean, theoretically, you want your bulge to last at least a couple hours. Yeah. Um, if it lasts too long, go see a doctor. Also very, very true. Uh, machine gun battery survives oh. just barely. Just I've barely. also noticed... Yeah, Holmeyun has not unloaded his three inch mortars and it feels like ten minutes. I think he completely forgot about him. I think it's more one of those things he's just kind of suggestion. It's like he's a twenty five pounder, the twenty five pounder is gonna engage those, those uh, machine guns. So it's it's a curious decision for sure. And I think right now the question is can this push be contained to pick up even a tiny bit of territory for the sixth airborne? Or do we have a bridge too far situation? wherein, well, the Brits just overextended. And I truly don't know which way to go at this point. Ah, uh, yeah, like down south, I feel like I'd be able to just barely hold on. The AB engineers coming in. But it doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, Homin pretty much has the victory. Pretty much, yes. I mean, he's got the 1311 now, uh, because he will be able to pick up a couple of small things here and there. Is it pack 40? Okay, yeah, pack 40 is engaged in the six pounder. Um, so, yeah, he can stall this out. It's not a big deal unless there is some crazy nonsense that goes on. There's no way in heck they can reverse the other direction. Yeah, and a very good Tempest strike on the pack 40. Now, as AB engineers, once again, to CQC, start throwing some satchel charges. They don't mess about. Oh, I'm, I'm watching the Northern Town as Panzer Shreks and Landa Schutzen. And Pigrens and all of these guys come charging on in. And I just want to kind of watch as the Grenadiers toss their, their gammon bombs. Once again, getting way too ballsy for the infantry pushes. And somehow the gammon bombs completely whiff. But, you know, once more to the breach, dear friends, once more. Yeah. Uh, You've and... got more land shooting to 
get shot over the land. Yes, yeah, true. That's true. They they are living up to the name. Land shot guys. And the ref ramen is also going in hot. <laughs> you know it's bad when the ref ramen's given machine gun fire support. Yeah, yeah, that feels a little bit forty K at that point. That's being like, okay, we've used all our, our ammunition. Okay guys, time to get real life for the Fuhrer. Let's go. <laughs> and he does go down. Um now northern side here, in fact even the middle, I was gonna make a, make a quick call out. The lung has collapsed over here for the blue. Which is a weird sentence to kind of say when you think about it. Um, but between... Oof. Centaur getting 86 by the flak gun and the Cromwell being able to focus it down in the meantime. So, once this goes down, I would be surprised if we see anything but uh, but tears from Rogish. Yeah, it's a very good Cromwell flank and the infantry just don't have the anti-tank capabilities to do anything about it. So, here we go. Rogish taps out and that is a GG. Justifiable one. I mean, we are seeing about 1,100 between the two. So, not being blown out per se, but at the same time, I felt like it was a little bit more one sided than it probably ended up being. Yeah, I mean, both players honestly played out very well, including Rogus, even though he didn't manage to put any points on the scoreboard. True. He was like doing counter attacks. Both players were playing all sides of the map. It says Homer Yoon was like a couple steps ahead. In regards to like leading the momentum and like distracting Rogus and different flanks, and also Rogus has did some poor micromanagement choices, such as the Opal Blitzes, maybe Panzer Free down south at the start would have been a bit better, and just a few minor choices like that. True, true. But if you look at the kills over here in the meantime, you have to look at Bedford and say what a good job, and you have to respect your elder. Um, but a lot of light tanks, heck, even that six pounder underneath it, Barnsley doing very, very well for himself. But for as far as the six goes, those Red Devils certainly took their fair share. And losses in the yeah. meantime, 231. I feel like, again, 231s could have been so killy in that. And unfortunately, they just were not given the opportunity. Yeah. A shame. A shame indeed. But well fought and, and well won, honestly. So well done, uh, Hamayun. And unfortunately, next time, Rogish will go from there. Indeed. Indeed. Any final thoughts, sir? Not today. Well, folks, in that case, then, come back another day to hear other thoughts that Rang has about life, the universe, and everything. But until then, I'm Conalberg. I'm Rang Roo. Take it easy.